So, Adro, you know, there was supposed to be a video on Friday. Where is that? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm super busy this few weeks. It's finals time for me, which means I need to study and I don't have time to make these kind of videos. And I don't even have time to do the full video I was meaning to do on Friday, which is a segment on Automator. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a different video today, which doesn't take as much effort for me to do, but it's still gonna be quite interesting, in my opinion. So today we're gonna talk about Flux. What is Flux? So basically, Flux is this application for your PC, Mac, phone, whatever, that is supposed to block out the blue light from your screen at night. And the reason for doing so is that Apparently, blue light reduces the amount of sleepiness chemical in your brain produces and thus, that's why a lot of medical doctors recommend that you do not look at the screen for one hour before you go to sleep. Flux attempts to fix this problem by blocking out said blue light and in return, you get an orange screen which is supposed to be A, nicer on your eyes and B, help you to sleep better. So as someone who uses the computer almost the whole day and sleeps pretty late at night, I decided to give this a shot. So I first installed it on my workstation PC, which is the computer I use to do all my homework, all this editing and whatnot. The install was pretty simple, but once I launched the app, I immediately noticed a problem. The mouse cursor was not affected by this orange overlay that Flux does which resulted in the mouse cursor looking very blue and it was very distracting to me. I looked around the settings and I couldn't find an option to fix this so I decided to go on the Googles and look up this issue. Turns out this is a rather common issue because on most Windows machines, the mouse cursor is drawn by the graphics card and when this happens, Flux can overlay the orange over the mouse. The solution was to disable this this feature and the easiest way to disable this feature is to just enable mouse trails in your cursor settings. So diving into the settings of Flux, you have many many options. You can set the temperature tone that you want Flux to do. So for example, you can have it more on the orange side or more on the cooler side. I set my settings at around 4000K at night because I found it the best blend between the warm and the cool and it still look pretty decent in my eyes. In the settings, you can also set when Flux activates. You can set it to activate all the time, or you can set Flux to activate depending on when the sun sets and when the sun rises. It can determine when the sun sets and when the sun rises depending on your IP, so you can geolocate and find roughly where you live. Or if you want to be more, even more precise, you can even type in coordinates and it will find when the sun sets and rises in your area. The first thing I'm using it was an adjustment, let's just say. It looked nicer to my eyes. The warm tone of the screen made my eyes feel quite comfortable, really. However, because this is my first time using it, colors looked off. Everything had an orange tint to it. And as someone who cares a lot about color because I work with a lot of photo and video editing, it kind of bothered me. However, within like five days, I was totally adjusted to it. However, when the sun sets every day, I can still notice a color difference, but then my eye adjusts to this color difference and I find it perfectly normal. So after installing my PC, I installed it on my MacBook, which is the second computer I use regularly. And installing my MacBook was painless. I didn't have to do any of the mouse cursor issues I had with my, Mac my PC, so that was nice. However, laptops and desktops aren't the only devices we are using every day. We have these devices too, phones and... A lot of people read on the devices at night, including myself. Flunks doesn't have an official app for Android, but thankfully there are third-party developers that do. So the, so the app I'm using right now is called Twilight. It basically does the same stuff. It is very similar in features, and the most important one is that it does have an option to turn on and turn off depending, again, on when the sun and sun rises, which is very nice. The only problem I have with Twilight is that it doesn't allow you to do certain tasks while it's activated. For example, installing a manual APK or connecting to a VPN. It does make sense though because Twilight is kind of acting like a buffer. So when you tap something, it's going through Twilight and then tapping it really on your Android system. So it kind of makes sense that, of course, Android doesn't allow that because if not, 
you know, malware can just take over your whole phone and just install the apps without warning. So I kind of understand that. But again, little caveat. And it's not a big deal, really, because I can just slide down my notifications and pause it anytime. Twilight is also not so customizable when it comes to color temperature as much as Flux, in my opinion. So that's kind of a little thing, but still, I like it a lot. There is an official Flux app for iOS, but the problem is you need to be jailbroke and do you use that. It's a problem with iOS, really. iOS doesn't allow you to have that much customization as Android, so you can't have that without jailbreaking. Now, the thing about Flux is that it removes the blue light, supposedly, right? And overcasts an orange color over your screen. So it's going to adjust colors. And for me, who, again, deals with all this photography, videos, editing stuff, it's probably going to affect me, right? Short answer, yes, it does. No, I think of myself as being pretty sensitive when it comes to color. But after a while, I got so used to Flux that I ended up accidentally editing photos while Flux was enabled. In fact, I wasted like one and a half hour that night because I totally forgot that it was enabled. And when I woke up the next day, I was like, oh, why does all the colors look off? Oh, that's why. <laughs> so yeah. Flux does change the colors, but it can be so unnoticeable at night that you accidentally do what I did. And that was kind of annoying. Now for Flux for Macs and PCs, you do have an option to disable both Flux for one hour if you're doing color sensitive work. Or if you're on a Mac app, you even have the option of disabling if you have a certain program open, like let's say Photoshop, which is very, very nice. But this is the final question. Does it help my sleep? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. If it did help my sleep, it's only a little bit. It's hard for me to measure my own sleep because every day I have a different sleep schedule. And also, the variables to how good you sleep change every day. For example, how long you slept, um, how stressed you were that day, and it varies every day. So, it's kind of hard for me to measure. If Flux really did help my sleep, I didn't really notice it much, not enough to be significant enough for me personally. However, one thing I really like Flux for and the main reason why I'm keeping it is because it makes the screen look nicer to my eye. Like I said, I work with my computer into very late hours of the night, so eye strain is a big problem for me. And with Flux enabled, I don't find myself getting as much eye strain, which I like a lot. And that's the main reason why I'm keeping Flux, and that's why I recommend Flux. So this is my final thought on Flux. I like it I, because it reduces my eye strain, and as far as helping my sleep goes, it might have helped, but not that much to make such a significant difference for me. Alright, I hope you did enjoy this actual project, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.